Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.1. In this video I'm going to go over how to create a keypad set of inputs. When creating a story or game, there might be a need to have the player input like a lot combination or solve a mathematical problem or input a series of numbers. One way to approach this issue is with creating a keypad set of inputs for the numbers 0 through 9 and then have the player click on them in turn. Let's see what this looks like. So here we have the instructions, enter a three digit combination, as well as a field where the numbers will appear, will appear, and then a keypad here where I can click on different numbers. So I click on 111, and that's it. So okay, clear it. Maybe 222, enter? No, guess not. Okay, so clear it. 890, clear, 456 maybe, enter? No, okay. Well, what's the combination? Well, I wrote the code, so I know what the combination is. It's one, two, three. And we hit enter. And we got it right! Hooray! <laughs> so, okay. So, what does this code look like? Well, the very first thing I'm doing is using a passage called startup with a startup tag. So, it gets run before everything else. And I'm sending entry to a string with nothing in it. So, just a quotation marks, an empty string. I'm sending the variable entry length to 3, remember we had a 3 digit code, and I'm setting the solution to 123, the string 123. So the very first thing I'm doing is I'm setting up entry to be an empty string, I'm setting up entry length to be 3, because we only want a 3 digit number, and I'm setting up solution to be the string 123. Then as we saw in the start passage, it just points to keypad, so we can immediately move over to keypad. So keypad's got a couple of different things going on here, the very first of which has a division element, a div element, with a class entry, and we'll go look at the CSS here in a second. But it has a hook with a name tag entry. So this is what we're changing each time we were looking at it. Inputting numbers changes entry. And then we have an HTML table with multiple rows and multiple cells. In each of these cells in this first row, we see a link repeat macro with the numbers 1, 2, 3. And then, when they're clicked, they're displaying the contents of the passage number 1, number 2, and number 3 each time. And it continues throughout this. So each time we click on one of these links, one of the numbers, we're displaying the contents of a passage with a corresponding entry here. So number 1, number 2, spelled out. Down here, clear, for the clear, uh, entry 0, and of course, uh, enter. So each time here, we're we are using the link repeat macro so it doesn't disappear each time and we can continue to click on numbers as you saw and every time we click on the link it's doing something that is it's using the display macro to display the contents of another passage so closing this for a moment we can come look at I've arranged the passages within the editor here within the same order that they appear to the player so we have number one number two number three down through clear number zero and in enter so let's look at number one for a second. So this code actually repeats throughout all of the numbers entry. So we have the check here, so we can collapsing the, the white space down to a single space. And then we're doing a conditional here. So, so okay, if the entry's length, the length of the string, is less than entry length, the value of the variable, then allow us to enter more numbers. So remember, in startup, I set entry to be an empty string, so it has zero length, and then set entry length, the variable, to 3. So we only want up to 3 digits. So in number 1 here, we double check that we haven't exceeded 3 digits, or three, the length of 3 for the string entry, and if we have, don't enter anymore. So we're only allowing 3 digit numbers. If we are, then we're setting entered, that is whatever was entered, to 1 in this case for number 1, and then we're doing a little bit of extra step here. We're, we're converting the number to text. So from, from a number into string, and then we're adding it to entry. Now we could actually combine these, but I wanted to take a second to separate them and show how to do that in case we wanted to use these to solve a mathematical formula or something else where we would need the number and not the string result. So I'm actually taking an extra step here as I did for all the numbers and separated them. So we have the number and then we reconvert it into string to add it to entry each time. And then finally we're replacing the hook with the name tab entry with the contents of the variable entry. And as we saw on keypad, 
we will we replace this each time. As we saw here, we click one and it replaced it. We can go back and we hit clear, it replaces it two, nine, six, and then remember we can't go past three digit numbers and clear gets rid of them. So numbers one through nine and zero all do the same thing. They check to see entries length, then they set entered to be some number, zero in this case. They add the strings together, so we have whatever it is plus now the number zero at the end, and then replaces the entry. The two different parts of the keypad, clear and enter, do two different things. So while all of the numbers combine the strings together to give us a three digit combination, clear and entry do two separate things. Clear resets entry to an empty string and then replaces entry with three stars, which is what it starts with when we originally see keypad, three stars. And you could set it to something else, of course. I just found three stars to be convenient here. Uh, it, it could be the instructions, if you'd like, or some other thing. And then we just change whatever it is down here, and we just replace it to reset. Remember, of course, to reset entry to an empty string because we're keeping track of its length. So it has to have a zero length each time. So enter is a little different. Enter has a, a simple if macro conditional here. So if entry is equal to solution, if entry is solution, they are the same thing, then we go to the passage using the go to macro, which immediately cuts off whatever's doing and shifts the player to another passage, and we go to passage end. Passage end, very straightforward, you got it right. So each time here, for numbers zero through nine, again, we're checking the length because we only want whatever entry we want, in this case, three digits. We're setting whatever this entry is, in this case, one. We're combining the strings and then we're replacing entry. For clear, we set entry back to an empty string and we replace it. Then for enter, if, this, if the entry is equal to the solution, then we go to another passage. And of course, startup sets all of these variables for us. It also allows us to be changed to a number of different things. We could set entry length to be a couple of different things here. We could actually set it to five and add a couple more digits. We could rerun the story. Come to keypad, one, two, three, four, five. And I got it right. And this allows us to sort of change this if we want by just changing, instead of changing, going in and changing code in different passages, we just change our startup values. We can change the entry length and our solution to a couple of different things. Now you could also use this if you wanted to, to change within keypad what these were. So instead of numbers, they could be letters and you could approach this the same way. Because remember, of course, we're actually checking strings to each other. So in each time, this is actually checked, remember, is strings to the solution to a string. So you could change these to be letters if you wanted or some other combination of things. And in the same way, correspondingly, change the solution without needing to change enter because it just is based on the values you use during startup. So there's a number of different ways to approach this using keypad set of inputs in zero through nine or whatever you want to change it to by just changing startup to change entry, entry length and solution, and then changing keypad to whatever you need to change these to. The other thing to note, however, is if you change these numbers, we will need to also change all the entered numbers. And so that's just one way to do that. But again, uh, this is based on strings, so it takes the number, switches it to a string, and then shows you the concatenation, the numbers uh, combined together and then whatever their result are as long as it's a three-digit number. So this is one way to approach uh, different keypad in input. The other thing I want to note before I end this video is to check the style sheet. So to view the style sheet of any story within Twine, we click on the name and we go to Edit Story Style Sheet. And I'm using some styles for the table data, changing the padding so it's a little bit bigger, changing the border to gray, doing text line center so all of the text, the numbers were centered, and changing the background color. Also changed the background color to white and the color of the text to black for entry. 
as we saw, just so it was a little bit different. And notice these have a gray border for this. But if we wanted to, we could get a little fancier and using CSS, we could change these in a couple of different ways and actually make it a lot, look a lot more like a certain type of keypad if you wanted it to be similar to a smartphone or a phone input or combine it in different ways here. And you can see both of these within the proof copy that will have the code within the description of this video, as well as the import copy if you would like to just input the, import the story wholesale and use it within your own projects as well. Both of those will be in the description of this video. Thanks for watching.